All right. Thanks, Jonathan, for all your support. This is Traffic and Transportation Committee, CB12, April 6, 7.06 p.m. Um, thank you all for making this work tonight. I know we got information into people's hands rather late, um, but really appreciate you being here. I'm uh, particularly uh, interested to hear we have DOT tonight uh, on something I think that is properly crisis related. Um, and so I am eager to hear from you all. So if you just want to introduce yourselves from the DOT team, and then just when we're done with this section, um, Lyle, if you could just stick around, we have a, just some follow-ups on old stuff. And if I can just ask, um, uh, for committee members, actually, let me just sidebar with Jonathan. Is the easiest thing for committee members who want to ask questions of DOT to also use the raise hand function, or can I do that in the chat? Um, no, since they are panelists, they can um, start talking when they decide it. Okay. They don't, they All right. Have, so yeah. we're going to see how that goes. Um, with allowing people to unmute themselves. And if we have issues, then we'll, we'll reassess. Um, but just wait for me to kick off the question time. All right. All right, so without further ado, uh, Lyle, Dan. Just one more thing before I, um, I leave. Um, Whoever you need to be recorded on the video, uh, you have to make them um, co-host in order to be recorded, okay? If they are not co-host, they are not be recorded. Okay, very good. I will take care of that. Yes, only host and co-host are recorded. Um, yeah. So Dan, let me just tell you, I have made you a co-host. I cannot do the same for Lyle since he's joined by phone, but we'll make it work. Okay. All right, go ahead. Lyle, do you want to start? Um, I guess if you want, you can go ahead. I'll just uh, say something real quick. Uh, just wanted to thank everyone for joining us under <laughs> some very unique conditions and circumstances. Um, we just wanted to make a presentation for you in regards to uh, some pedestrian ramps uh, we have by the Henry Hudson Parkway just northwest of Columbia Presbyterian. Um, we've gone through the presentation. I think it's pretty good. And if Dan wants to take it away, I'll put myself on mute. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to do a share screen here. If it doesn't work, let me know. Let's see, share. Is that working? Okay. Okay, so um, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Dan Wagner. I am with the DOT in the pedestrian unit, and we are here to talk today about a pedestrian project that uh, the agency has been working on for a number of years. Uh, this is coincidentally related to the outbreak of this virus, but it, uh, the timing of it is just coincidence more than anything else. Um, we are going to be looking for a vote of support as I want to start this off. This is a project that has been submitted for some grant funding and the grant funding uh, is comes from the state and the federal and there's a lot of paperwork involved. So we're a little early or earlier than you're used to seeing on a project like this, um, but uh, we're here now. So, and that's, we need the vote of support for the grant funding is what it comes down to. Um, to start off, this project is going to be located um, in a place that I find it uh, difficult to describe. It's, it's uh, on Riverside Drive, but it's, uh, I think most of the neighborhood will understand it. Uh, most of the people on this call will understand it, but just to go through it, um, it's near the Fort Washington Park uh, entrances, and it, we're talking about getting access to those entrances. 
Um, this originally, originally came to us from DPR themselves asking for access to the park um, at 165th Street. We are not going to talk about 165th Street today, but uh, you need to go through 165th Street to get to this location. Um, it is near the hospital. Um, it is near some very regional circulation points for uh, highways. And if you know Fort Washington Park well, uh, you'll know that there's really only four pedestrian access points um, in the in the sort of the area. Um, one to the north at near 181st Street, one to the south near 161st Street, and then the two that we'll be talking about today. Um, and I do want to point out that there are five ramps that we're talking about, but one of them is an on-ramp and the other four are off ramps. Uh, since I have been working on this project, not the project itself has been difficult, it, the, talking about it has been very difficult. So for the purposes of this presentation, um, I have arbitrarily named each one of these ramps. Um, so I just, just ask you to just bear with me. Um, going from the north to the south, they are located, you know, I'm just calling them A, B, C. Um, all three of them are off ramps. Uh, one of them is to turn left to go north on Riverside Drive. Um, this is coming from southbound Henry Hudson Parkway. And then this, uh, the main ramp is ramp B. There's a lot of traffic on ramp B. This has two lanes of traffic and it's to go southbound on Riverside Drive from southbound Henry Hudson Parkway. The third ramp in this location is, I'm just calling it ramp C, and it is a northbound Henry Hudson Parkway to go southbound on Riverside Drive. Um, that is a much lighter uh, ramp in terms of traffic volume. And then going further south, I'm just gonna call them ramps D and E. D is an on-ramp that is for going to the George Washington Bridge, or I guess the Cross, Cross Bronx if you wanted to or whatnot. Um, but main, mainly I would presume to the George Washington Bridge. And then southbound from the George Washington Bridge or the Cross Bronx or, you know, there's a whole bunch of connectors up there. Um, southbound to Riverside Drive uh, is ramp E. And I've provided photos so you can kind of see what each one of them looks like. Um, so those are the five locations that I want to talk about. If you have any questions, just let me know and we'll go over them again because it might get confusing. Um, but what is happening is that the driver behavior on Riverside Drive is that if you're driving south on, Rivers on Henry Hudson Parkway and you want to go to the George Washington Bridge, uh, a very common routing, you're going to end up coming off of, off of the ramp onto, ramp onto location B or ramp B and then you're gonna get onto Riverside Drive before getting back onto a highway like. So what's happening is that you're putting highway traffic and highway behavior onto a city street. Um, and so therefore you get volumes and you get behaviors um, that, are, that are highway conditions, but you have pedestrians walking by it. A highway typically should have no pedestrians on it. Um, so this can be a little bit of a challenge for pedestrians who are trying to get to the park. Um, if you're getting to the park, you're going to be, I mean, coming from the neighborhood that, and you're not using the 181st entrance, then you're likely to be coming from 165th Street. And if you walk north on 165th Street, you have to cross location E, location D, and location C to get to the park. And depending on which route you're choosing to take, you might even have to go across B and A as well. Um, there, it's all five of those locations do not have crosswalks. All five of those locations do not have the uh, required pedestrian ramps to meet ADA requirements. They don't even have a sidewalk to get across to uh, ramp A. So these are all, we'll call them challenges for pedestrians who are trying to use the park. Um, the photo at the bottom of the screen is, is walking out of the park. You, 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 you're following some paths, you get, a, you get to this point, and then you go, where am I supposed to go from here? Um, and let's see, so, yeah, so this, I guess I just went over this, but uh, there's, there's no sidewalk on the splitter island between A and B. There are no uh, crosswalks or pedestrian ramps at all locations, and then there's no actual pedestrian facility to get to where the park has a pedestrian facility. And I know that the, the facility from the park is not exactly, uh, you know, highest class, but it is, it is, it is a actual 
point and sort of that's where the jurisdiction between the park and parks department and dot sort of switches so we're going to do what we can do within our jurisdiction um, at locations d and e again there's no crossings and there are uh, long crossing distances and then the soft turns allow for higher speed turns and therefore higher or more aggressive behavior and, and more dangerous behavior um, so what we are here to talk about is a it's 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 a rapid response quote unquote um, rather than a capital it's an in-house project rather than a capital project capital project typically can do a lot of things and in-house projects are limited in their scope due to you know to keep the costs down and so we can do them quickly um, the toolkit in the in-house is crosswalks and new sidewalks um, you know depending on the case-by-case -case basis we also use pedestrian space uh, with painted flexible delineators you, your uh, your communities should be very familiar with most of these um, in that we you are seeing them pop up around the city and I know of quite a few locations in uh, you know near this project where they already exist um, so here we are going to talk about the proposal what we are looking to do is to add the crosswalks um, that are ADA compliant at all three locations on this screen a B and C we're going to construct a sidewalk between A and B to connect them so pedestrians going north south can actually have a facility to walk on and then uh, number two is we want to construct a sidewalk that is pedestrian sized rather than uh, the slip of of grass that exists now we want to install a little bit wider space and the reconfiguring of the geometry at this location um, would actually help slow down traffic a little bit um, just as they turned right uh, from the ramp down to, to go head, to head south on Riverside Drive. Um, and of course, a crosswalk between across ramp C as well. Um, so this is what it looks like now. That's the little slip of grass that you see right in front of that uh, maroon car. Um, but there's a stop control for location C and then two lanes of traffic for location B. Our proposal is to just sort of widen that space a little bit and provide some crosswalks that didn't exist or, uh, you know, in, it, that don't exist now today. Uh, further south at locations D and E, uh, again, it's very similar. We're proposing to install a, at location D, we're actually gonna, we're, the plan is to build a slight curb extension um, just to the south so that way you can slow down some of those turns and you can shorten the crossing distance uh, because that is a very, very wide ramp. Um, and then we're going to install the crosswalks and ADA pedestrian ramps. And we are also proposing to reduce the number of lanes on ramp E. There's currently three and all of our traffic models show that that is one lane more than is necessary. So uh, we re reconfigure the ramps slightly. Uh, this one would only be using paint. Um, just because of constructability reasons, we you, you would need a capital project to do that in in concrete. Um, but it should will use flexible delineators and other other you know necessary um, elements, just like in this photo where you can see that it's very clear where cars should be going where they should not be going. Um, this would then help create you know sort of sharper turns onto Riverside Drive or from to and from Riverside Drive. Uh, for that George Washington Bridge access routing that people do. Um, and it, you know, calms traffic and increases safety for pedestrians crossing the street. Um, again, like I said at the beginning, this is for, this project is not for this year. Prior to the pandemic outbreak, we were planning to do this in 2021. Uh, now, I, I don't know what to say, but I do know we still need to file the paperwork, so that's why we're coming to you today. The idea was to present this to your community board in the spring and hopefully receive a letter of support so we could then file the paperwork because that letter of support is required. And then the agency would come back in either 2021 or 2022, depending on the outcomes of the uh, of this work from homes to shelter in place style orders that we are all under. Um, so just to, again, it's just the summary is just that it's just we're adding five crosswalks, but we are reconfiguring the, you know, two or three of the actual ramps to make them a little bit uh, more pedestrian friendly so people can go to and from the park. Um, 
and it, you know, it adds better neighborhood access to Fort Washington Park. It does calm traffic and it does shorten crossings. And it's a pretty simple proposal, but I am here to see what kind of questions you have. Um, all right, thank you, Dan. Um, I just, let me just see if we need to pass this. Oh no, we don't. Um, all right, everybody should be set on, you should have the ability on the TNT committee as well as Sally to unmute yourselves. Um, oh wait, that's sometimes, okay. So now you should have the ability to unmute themselves. Um, Correct. All right, so I have a few questions and then just but before that, if we could just hear the stack what, can I just hear in an organized fashion from the committee of who'd like to um, ask questions of Dan or make um, James had his hand up first. Okay. Yep. So that's the only hand that we have up at the moment. All right. Um, all right. So, but let me just preface this because these are somewhat clarifying as opposed to observations is that uh, if you could provide Dan a little more information on what you mean by grant, like how, you're, this sounds like it's different than a usual, how a usual DOT project is is sort of funded in a way. So if you could give us a little commentary on that. And then also, obviously, my misunderstanding that this didn't tie to providing better park access during the crisis in some way, which I guess that was silly to think something could move quite that fast. But I guess I would be curious as to would this be accelerated um, in any way? And what would that take to accelerate if, if we wanted it to be accelerated? I mean, I think you'll find this committee is very familiar with these spots. I feel like access to the park at those locations is really an urban myth. Um, so it is great to see that we might make some progress there. I mean, I will say, I didn't even know the existence of this stuff until the bike access was out on that bridge in the park and people, a couple people knew about this and described it, but it, it was impossible to understand what people were talking about. Uh, yeah, completely, completely understand. Um, so to answer your question about the grant funding, it, it, I don't know, I can give you like way down to the details. I don't really think that's necessary. Um, so I'm not sure where to where to stop. But if any of this is confusing, just just ask follow-up questions. Um, basically, what's happening is that the the city, New York City DOT, uh, identified this as a location we'd like to work at and applied for some funding from the state. The state approved it, and okay. in the past, uh, we used to do it. We used to do this process just sort of. We kept the community boards out of talking about grant funding and all that kind of stuff um, until we needed it. But uh, somehow, in some way, uh, something has happened at the state over the last year or two where they have started asking lots more questions and gotten a lot more particular. And so we are okay. trying to do everything by the book and above the board. We're, we're never trying to sneak anything by anybody before, but it, previously we did what we thought was necessary and it was working. And now they want more, just more details. Um, and okay. that comes with longer lead times just to make sure we cross every T and dot every I. All right. Can we speed this up? Um, right now, the DOT is under a basic, not completely, but like 99% stop work while we all right. sit through this uh, condition. And, you know, for all future planning, emergency stuff is still operating, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know how long this would last, and we have to do all of the grant paperwork first before we could start imp implementing this project. If the grant paperwork gets gets submitted, I mean, one of the things that we can do while we're all working from home, it feels like, is, is file and process paperwork, right? Um, rather than being out and about on the streets. So if we can, this is one of, this, this is part of a project of funding that has a number of projects in it and all, some of them are pretty close. One of them needs a little bit of work. I don't, I can't make any promises about when this would be done, but um, so that's I guess, kind of my hemming and hawing is really not, it's not up to me or us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Jim? Hi there. Let me see if I can put on my video so I can frighten everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, about a year or two ago, and you'll see where I'm going, um, as part of the project to restore the George Washington Bridge, the exit ramp to 178th Street was closed. And there was a detour that um, took people in the left lane. In fact, could you go to, yeah, I'll tell you, not that slide, the next one, the next one. I don't, that's that's I, perfect, no, I, one before I, that. This one? For, exactly, yeah, leave that one. Now, what happened at that time, um, C is an exit from the northbound Henry Hudson Parkway that forces you to go southbound. But during this, this construction of the ramp, what happened is um, exit B was narrowed to one lane and then exit C actually allowed people, there was, uh, uh, they paved it and there was signage so people at that point could also go north. So people could um, exit from the northbound um, Henry Hudson Parkway and get on northbound Riverside Drive. Now, what they did, and this is what your diagram shows, is they restored it to what it was, but we in the neighborhood found that it actually worked very well, and it would be, you know, I think an enormous boon to everyone who lives here, is then people could go get off the Henry Hudson Parkway from both northbound and southbound, that since you're gonna work on this anyway, and they already did it. You can go see how they did it because obviously, if, you know, either the Port Authority did it or you, you guys did it or you did it in conjunction with one another. It, it wasn't City DOT. Okay, fine. But, you know, they can give you the plans of what they did too. And, you know, if, if this is feasible, and well, it is feasible. Now, it may not be the safest thing, but I don't believe there are any great accidents happening down there. So I'm urging you to consider, you know, since you're going to work down there anyway, make it possible for people on you know ramp c to actually exit and go north and again that was done by the port authority so already i'm uh if you give me a second i am sure. going to try to pull something up here uh, yeah. hey, jonathan, oh, well. jonathan it's bruce could you put on the q a please or the chat i can't type in a question thank you weird you can you can't I can't, I can't find the chat. I'm trying to send Yeah, I can't find the chat either. Um, the chat? Right, let me, let me work on that. The no, chat is under is this on. thing with three dots. There's a whole bunch of things there. Under There's a thing with three dots somewhere, I think. No, you're wrong. I'm sorry. I, I've used this consistently, and the chat uh, comes up pretty I think it's just because we have... Oh, oh wait a second. The chat is turned... Let me, let me just, if you, if you don't mind. The chat is intentionally turned off because That's what cool. happened the last time we used it is there were two meetings going on at the same time and Robert's rules doesn't allow that. So when we have meetings, the chat will not be available. The Q&A should work, but the chat has actually been turned off because not turning it off would violate Robert's rules of order. So all I can go. do is type an answer into the Q&A. I can't type a question. Just type. And then, Try and then, it. But it, why don't you just say it? Okay. Okay, so uh, while Bruce tries to figure that out, I, James, I, the ramp that is ramp C is, do you, see, do you see my screen? This is the one that is ramp C that my little hand icon is going up and down on. Do you see no, that? I don't, I don't see your hand icon moving, okay. unfortunately. Do you, see, do you see where my hand icon is right now? Right it now, it's, 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 a, it's, up in, in, it's in the middle of the screen on the top. Okay, so that is on top of ramp C. The ramp that you're thinking of is this ramp. Well, and again, I can't, I can't see what you're pointing at, but what I'm looking at is, you know, in, in the picture on the left side of the screen, there's a circle with an A, it's blue. That oh, I call ramp A, and there's shoot. a brown thing, I call that B, and there's a black, ah, now I see your cursor again, all of a sudden. Okay, so that yeah, didn't work, now I was I trying to... Oh, I was yeah. trying to share my screen and it didn't work. All right, so let me okay. try it again. Let me try that again. Okay. So, so one thing I'm not sure anybody knows is that at B there's a stoplight, which directs traffic, you all. All right, let me try it this way now. All right. But now you're now you're looking at an aerial, right? Right. Okay. 
Sorry, I forgot to do one thing. Okay, so this cursor, do you see my cursor on top of yes, ramp Yes, yes, right yes, now? yes. This yes. is ramp C. Right. Ramp B, two lanes, ramp A. The ramp you're thinking of is not ramp C. You're thinking oh. of this oh, ramp. Oh, it's that. This one. Ah, yeah. ah. See, this is a ramp easy. from, right. yeah, this is a ramp from the bridge. It comes down here, comes around, comes up, and right. then if you want to come up. Okay, so that's, that's, that's very location. helpful because that confused me. But let me just change the subject. I know you're not doing that, but we would like you, if possible, to put that back because it was wonderful. <laughs> Understood. Uh, it's, I don't even think it's our jurisdiction. Yeah. So well, I think our jurisdiction probably, probably just, starts right here. Up as a committee, let's deal with that separately. I'd like to just focus on this presentation. And okay. We have anybody else that wanted to. Um, Oh, Dan, did you give the screen back to one of us? Uh, yeah, I just put it out. If you want me to bring it back to my presentation, I can. Yeah, um, yeah just until we're until sure. we're done with this discussion. So, um, anybody raise their hand that wants to say something from the committee or Sally as a CB member, and then if we have anybody um, at this time from the attendee side that wants to raise their hand, please do. Uh, Omar, you you got visibility on that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at everything. There's no no hands raised on either side. Okay, and so Dan, just to make sure I'm clear, you guys would hope to come out with a resolution uh, tonight on this. Yeah, as soon as the okay. as soon as the you can come up with one. If, okay. If, if, assuming so, you support the proposal, then we would appreciate a resolution. Um. So I'm going to make a motion that uh, we support this proposal to give us pedestrian um, access, better pedestrian access through all those intersections. Um, do I have a second? I second the motion. Okay. Um, why don't we do, except I can't raise my hand, can I? Um, you probably can. Can I, can I have an can I have a vocal all in favor on the TNT committee? Aye, aye. aye. Well, wh why don't we be slightly more formal? Let's just have a voice vote. Call the names and we'll all say okay. our answer and then it'll be reported properly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, James. Um, all right, so I vote yes. Uh, Omar? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Jim? Yes. Robin. Sorry, Robin, let me. Okay, go ahead, Robin. Oh. He's not here. Oh, Robin is here. Yeah, sorry. I think I just, I lost him. I'll come back to Robin. Um, Gerard. Gerard, one more time. That's weird. He's unmuted and he is here. Oh, Mary. When did you come on? Mary? She's muted. No, she's not. No, she's not. Okay, let me try Robin again. Sometimes they just leave the computer out alone and. Huh. Um, that is weird. Okay, so if you have not voted, can I hear from Robin, Mary, Gerard? Oh my goodness. Um, I think the issue is the issue is that they are using a computer without a mic. That's why I cannot. Talk. Ah, okay. Um, so can I get um, Mary, Robin, Gerard to um, type into the Q&A their vote in the absence of audio? And uh, while we're waiting for that, Sally, would you like to vote on this one? Sure. 
sense. It makes sense to me. All right, great. Thank you for joining tonight. Um, and Jim, did I get, I got your vote, right? Who? Jim, yeah, he said yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I said yes. Oh, there's Robin. Do you just, Robin, put a thumb up if you're in favor. Go like that. Go like that. Go. <laughs> Thank you. Robin vote, Cruz votes in favor. Um, Mary and Gerard, we will uh, get you when we can. And Edith, please. Yes. Thank you. Hi, James. All right. Sorry, I know this is a little cumbersome. I appreciate everybody's patience. Dan, thank you so much um, for thank you. this presentation. What's our tally uh, on the vote? Sorry? Our tally? Vote? What was it? I'm trying to see. Yeah. All in favor who voted. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six committee members. We're just going to wait to get a written from Gerard and Mary. Yep. And um, because I think Mary's here by phone, I'm pretty sure. No, actually. But, um, and, um, and so right now, no voting against it. Um, so uh, and Dan, if you can just, hey Gerard, um, Dan, if you can just, or Lyle, forward me the presentation um, so we can, you know, work up a quick resolution. It should right be now, on, it yeah. should be online tomorrow as well. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, Lyle, are you still with us and can you hear? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. I've heard everything okay. so far. So. Great. Um, so just if, if it's okay, I just wanted to touch upon some old business items while we still had you. And okay. that should be pretty quick. And then Edith had something that wasn't, it was kind of related to you, but kind of related to D DDC. So, um, I don't think any of it will take very long, but if you wouldn't mind just staying with us because I've had a little hard time getting feedback on DDC and you might be able to advise us. And um, Dan, I'm just going to take you off. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye, now. actually. I'm All just right. going to take off. Uh, thank you well, very much nice for your time. You. I appreciate everybody. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Bye-bye. Thanks. Hey, Debbie, is it possible to add Lyle as a co-host so his answers get recorded? Or is it because he's on via phone, so we can't do that? Yeah, I don't know if, yeah, I'm uh, just calling in, so I don't know if uh, right. anything to use. Um, okay. So, uh, Lyle, just, um, the, this is, I know this is a minor item, but the uh, street lamps on Cabrini, I know that, there's a lot of stuff that's had like stop work. I'm just wondering if that's one of them, just because it's the streets are really quiet right now. So to like also not have the light is an issue. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm actually trying to get an update on the status of those lamps. Um, I think they were still working on them um, as of a few weeks ago. I'm not sure what's happening fairly recently. You know, I'm not sure if any stop work order has come across for those guys yet, but um, I'm trying to get some information on that. Um, so I'll definitely let you know once I get some. Um, but I've been in touch with uh, both Con Ed and uh, the street lighting team on my end just to see what's going on. Um, just, I guess, as a quick uh, update as far as, you know, what is happening around there. Um, it seems as if uh, the foundation for all of the bases for the light poles along Cabrini between 181st and 187th um, have been corroded. 
Uh, so they've been removed for the time being and are in the process of being replaced. Um, clearly it's taking a while um, and this might prolong that situation, um, but I'm trying to see if I can get some updated information for you guys. And um, definitely when I have that for you, I'll pass it along. Okay, great. And I feel like I had one more, but now that has... Debbie, if I could oh, just yeah. mention, because I we both live on that same street and there are other streets involved as well. That's almost essential work because these streets are dangerously dark and even right. though there's very little traffic, yeah. you know, it is dangerous. No, I, that's, that right. is what I would guess as well. Uh, Thank you. To be true is that it would fall under essential, but you don't know. Um, so um, the other thing I wanted to ask about, okay, now it keeps coming in my head and then leaving my head. Um, oh, I know. And I know this is a little bit moving to new business, and in which case I would let um, Edith go first. But uh, one thing I did want to bring up is that the very tiny, tiny streets program of closing streets so people have more ways to be outside and achieve social distance. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, is is, you know, any information about, is that program going to be expanded and how do we give feedback with suggestions on locations and is there opportunity for community boards to do so? And I was going to say, I believe that was suspended today. Right. That, yeah, no, I, right before I came on this call, I was watching the news and it said the Open Street Project suspended. Oh, no, all the things, I don't know. Um, I think what Debbie's talking about, there are certain uh, streets that uh, the city is looking to um, to close for pedestrian access primarily. Um, right, but that was so suspended. That, yeah, it was announced in the news right before this meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could, no, I wasn't aware of that either. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I, right. I, I, can look, well, I know there had been some conversations of expanding it into northern Manhattan, but they were still trying to have those conversations as far as which street. Um, if there are suggestions that you have, um, I can relay it to uh, the team on my end. But, you know, considering what was just mentioned, I'm going to check to see, you know, what's going on with that program uh, in general, and I can get back to you. But in the meantime, you know, if there are locations that you'd like for us to look at, or if there are locations that we're thinking about, I can definitely relay that information and you can tell me uh, either way. Okay. Um I need to mute myself for just a moment. Um, I've, Edith has brought up an issue um, and I just like to, I've made her co-host for the moment. Um, and it, it, it sort of relates to DDC, but I was hoping that Edith could take us through sort of what the law says and then what the gap is to what's actually happening on the streets when there's, um, in this case, all this uh, work being done on the pedestrian ramps. Um, Edith, do you mind taking the committee through that? I just need to step away for like 10 seconds. <laughs> Wait, let me... Okay, Edith. Okay, um, in general, when there is work being uh, there is when there's work being done on a sidewalk in any way, shape, or form. There is supposed to be notice placed between that work area and the previous head ramp, the corner. Mm -hmm. um, workers are required to put in a temporary ramp to allow you to get onto the sidewalk where mm -hmm. the, if they have say they're cutting a gas line that you have to be able to somehow know they've taken out that access so you're basically told like cross the street you know and then cross the street back on the other side mm -hmm. Work. Um, 
my my issue was there were pedestrian ramp work that's being done. Oh, and, and they're required to have blockage, you know, uh, uh, like um, a barricade, a barricade mm -hmm. and a warning light. I went out. Uh, See, it, it was for more me and, um, trying to walk side and discovered that closed with no fencing and no warning. That, uh, for whatever reason, that's a very dark corner. It's like, you know, the, the um, street light, it's like across the street, yada. So that you had to like, you know, cross and come back. And it's, it, there was an entire section that basically went from Staples all the way up to a deal. I mean, Dallas store. There were no barricades. There were no warning lights. And it was, it was dangerous. It was enough weeks ago that it was darker earlier. And what I find confusing is that I haven't seen other ped ramps coming in that are so bad. Now, I don't know if the contractor is doing, you know, from point from like 184th to 192nd, whatever. But for whatever reason, this particular section was very bad. And I just like to understand what the requirement is when they're doing work on, you know, putting it in the, in the, in the domes, et cetera, um, fixing the uh, asphalt to the cement work, et cetera. Because in this particular area, it was just really poorly done. Thank you. Hi, you did it before, before, before Lyle answers, what is the exact corner you were mentioning? Because you were breaking up in my feed. Yeah. Okay. On the East Broadway, the work preceded, which is like 184th Street, or 185th Street. And it went as far up as 192nd on the west side. On Broadway. There was on Broadway. So it, okay. Staples to, D, to Dallas Store. Um, okay. I haven't been out again now because you're not going out. Um, mm. But, you know, these were the areas. They it, where they were put in the red domed rubber, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, on, I know, I on, know the, what you're on the ramps. These, these, mm -hmm. er, this was an area that that did not have domed before. And what they did was go in, fix the cement work if it was needed. Mm -hmm. And then they put in the rubber piece. Yes. I mean, at the school, they actually the the the, the things that Con Ed puts over the the rubber pieces. It's flat on the top and angles down on mm -hmm. the two sides, mm -hmm. and it's too steep. They yeah. they put that in over the, but in general there were not otherwise, other at the school temporary lamps installed. The only place where there were at the school. Other than that, there have been like no real barricades. Up getting to feel like 
we were being discriminated against in this little section that we okay much more else i've seen thank you okay um pretty much anything I, I i'm going to try to do some research as far as that particular location i know that uh the city dot has been going around um taking uh measurements and looking at uh pretty much every single pedestrian ramp that we have in the city to see if they're ADA compliant um i think that there is a crew that's going around northern manhattan now uh that's uh in the process of making those uh upgrades um i can check with them i'm not sure if that would fall under our jurisdiction or if that's you know a dot project or if that's cdc but on the dot and at least i can check in with uh the liaison uh just to see if there's any information that she can provide as far as any potential work that dot is doing around there and if it is dot related i can uh, definitely give her the heads up uh that there are some concerns as far as you know pedestrian ramps the temporary ones um any sort of pedestrian safety concerns um you know i you know, we can definitely take a look at that um i'm, I'm going to do some more research to see what i can find out for you but um like i said i know that we're going around uh trying to do that at least on the dot end and for any project that we have just in general or any other agency would have um that uses a dot sidewalk any sort of you know uh, roadbed um you're you're right there are to be safety measures in place for pedestrians uh in order to walk around those construction sites safely so uh if there are cases and it seems like this might be the case up there where this is the situation uh definitely we can have uh our quality assurance team uh go up to this location just to make sure that what the procedures are supposed to be uh met are um, you know, they have to be held to standards during construction as well, just to make sure that everyone's safety is accounted for. So, you know, if, you know, there is a question of safety, you know, at this location, um, you know, I can get our quality assurance team to follow up just to make sure that what should be going on there from a safety standpoint is. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things. Does anybody have anything in old business or new business that they would like to raise? Hi, Dev. It's Omar. I just want to bring up the, uh, the message from Mary in terms of we might need the MTA to come and speak to us about the accessibility to the buses, specifically the front of the bus, when somebody has an ADA approved reason for it because unfortunately she was asked to board at the back of the bus and i mentioned that there is protocol that's out there and in that protocol it does mention that if somebody has a valid ada reason they should be able to access the front of the bus to load and offload from the bus this isn't due to the covid issue that we have going right oh i'm so glad you brought that up because um i had completely forgotten to raise it and um and I think also to add to the list for the MTA, I think we've all seen reports of the not great conditions, I guess at the 207th Street stop on the A at least, um, in terms of cleanliness and a lot of people like living, you know, sleeping in the subway cars and things not getting cleaned up. And I think, I know everybody's under stress, but maybe we can get some feedback from the MTA on, you know, how they're, how they can address that. Um, yes, yeah, I was actually gonna bring that up too, that the boarding at 207. Excuse me, Deb? Yeah? Um, it's Edith. Okay, I happen to be on the accessibility committee and I brought this up with our director who asked, uh, I'll, there are regulations in general that require the uh, front ramp to be open to anyone who requests it. And it's an right. ongoing problem for many years. Okay, I do have the, um, 
and I would I would like to email it to you and you can disseminate it. But there, um, I had posted the um, the first thing that just said, you know, front door, back door. I have a more recent one from the system wide um, accessibility, and I will send that to you. And would you please send it out with the specific email address? to have people forward accessibility issue MTA. That way, Jim, so I'm not sending this emails to everyone, which I gather would be your problem. Okay, can I just send it to you and you'll send it on? That would be great. So you're saying this would allow people when, like, for example, when Mary had her issue the other day, but then she can send right away to this address to so that it's reported. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. That's a great resource, and we should all have it. She also should stay at the front of the bus, and and you know say I need it. Right, right. Um, okay, thank you, Edith. Um, Maybe I wanted to go back to the topic that you had just brought up. Yep. Um, in terms of what's going on with the homeless population boarding at 207th Street, um, just because I've noticed how much more exasperated the issue has become during this crisis. So it'd be good to have DMTA uh, respond to that as well. What are they doing at 207th Street? with this. Um, okay. Okay, so I will reach out to the MTA on both those points. Um, I also know that there have been some, you know, well, they cut the service and understandably, but it does seem like they overshot it because we're also seeing pictures of overcrowding. Has anybody on the committee Sounds like Omar, you've been on the A train. Yeah, I've been, been on the A train just so I can have sanity in between working from home. So I can kind of get out and then take the A train up to about 190th Street and then go to the cloisters with my wife and then take the A train back because she's been on a walking boot the whole time. And that's when I kind of see it. I see how much more the difference has been in terms of what's going on with the trains. And yes, they are becoming more crowded because. I talked to my friends who actually still have to commute to work and they show pictures of what the conditions are on the trains when they're taking them and they're saying this is out of control. Um, okay, all right, so that, um, all right. So I have three takeaways with the MTA. Um, I would agree with then, Omar. Uh, yeah. This is Gerard, good evening everybody. Um, on the A train, I take the A train and I, I think I probably did get sick and I, I'd almost say it was, because I haven't gone to work on the A train and it is the most foul, disgusting, no one is doing any cleaning. There's really virtually no policing. Police, when they're on that platform, they're either up at the top of the stairs or somewhere where the homeless are not and they're typically inhabiting all the trains. No just to the homeless, but um, our, our, our health crisis is being exponentially increased by a failure of our leadership to not expose us and anybody that's been getting on the trains, which I have been one of them regularly, is what well, I want to make that very clear. Our leadership has failed us and put us all at risk by not keeping trains clean, by insisting, uh, by not insisting that people don't flood the uh, trains at 207th Street homeless. Um, uh, our, there's no consideration for the health and well being of most people that get on, at least at 207th Street. So I support what you're saying, Omar. Oh. I have my okay. hand up. Uh, you oh. did. Yeah. Sorry, now I see you. Jim, go ahead. Thank you. I just want to you know, second what everyone else is saying because the, the, the six foot rule, which among other things is now considered actually not to be adequate anymore because of the spinal spray or whatever, and we should be even further apart. The second, that six foot rule is for everywhere. It's for, you know, in the subway, it's for on the bus, it's for in the park, 
And if people are crammed in like sardines, you know, as, as, as pointed out, you know, they're actually having their lives in danger. Now, of course, people should also be wearing masks at this point to keep, among other things, their breath from going to other people. But, you know, that's very problematical. That's, that's a dangerous, you know, health situation. Can I, can I mention right. one other, one other uh, location? Anybody? Uh, yeah. Debbie, I don't want to jump in on anybody. No, 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 please do. Please do, Gerard. Um, also, um, I consistently, on my way to work, have to necessarily go through Penn Station. And it is another place where our leadership has failed us and refuses to not keep us out of harm's way and risk. Throughout the whole Penn Station, where, where they've actually restricted your walkway, you're forced to walk through by people that are, are, are at all levels of emotional disturbance. You know, you're just barely missing getting walked into or swung at or spit on through Penn Station. And act, actually at the entrance, there's so many people. Again, if, we, if the concern for all of our health is genuine, I don't understand why there is really nothing being done in terms of keeping um, that, uh, as you were saying, Jim, um, there's way too many people in very enclosed areas and they're literally, literally doing nothing about it. All right. Ugh. Okay. Uh, Jim, did you have something else? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I think we are ready to adjourn um if unless anybody has something or i miss something please please highlight it all right 803 this meeting is adjourned i thank everybody for their participation as we start our zoom journey um and uh i'll work on the reso oh uh, wait we we have a, a question that came in as i'm busy writing notes so i couldn't see robin's question um he just wants to know why the C train is not working. He wants the uh, an, uh, the MTA to answer to that. So we can add that under the list of MTA items that we had. Ah, I did not know that one. Okay, thank you. And then Bruce had his hand up, but I don't know if Bruce still had anything to say. I second the adjournment. Ah, great. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, just a quick question for, for Debbie. Um, I just wanted to follow up real quick on the um, resolution Rezo? for the, yeah for the yeah. presentation that we had last month for the 178th Street uh, pedestrian project. I um, um, just wanted to check this. Yes, any, uh, I um I've had a I've just I'm having a little difficulty. I have followed up several times. Actually, Jim, if you can shed light on this at the executive virtual executive committee meeting. Um, yeah, if, if about, I might just yeah, thank you. Um, we passed, we said that we would do it via a chair, a letter from the chair of this committee. Well, not, not quite, but you're almost there. It, it turns out our bylaws anticipate emergencies to the degree that the chair can actually act on behalf of the board all by himself if necessary. And that way, you know, let's say, for example, you can't get the executive committee together. So essentially, um, everyone it was in favor of your resolution, and as far as I know, Eli will be sending out a letter that he is approving it, and then at the next meeting, next Skype meeting or, you know, Zoom, we will be um, ratifying it. But Eli should be working. So if you reach out to Ebenezer, they, they should be working on, on, you know, the resolution and, and that we, it's essentially... Right. Jim, have you heard anything from them specifically to the point? Because I've followed up both immediately after no, the meeting several times not. since. Okay. Um, no. So, um, Lyle, I'm sorry. I will try to track that down. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and so, but this I didn't realize. So even though we sort of passed it unanimously, once Eli had the letter, Eli writes a letter that we once again have to ratify it. Like we have to, not once again, but we need to ratify it. Yeah, but the point is it goes into effect the second Eli gets the letter to them. It's as though we already ratified it because oh, okay. we will ratify it. But it, we ratify it as a board. Right. 
Oh, got it. Okay. But the resolution is already, the second Eli gets it to them, it's already a resolution. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So Lyle, we'll, thank you I'll for making for, this work. No problem. I'll, I'll wait for Eli's letter and, uh, you know, we're still open for business. I just want to let everybody know. So if there are any issues, you know, that, uh, you know, residents do have that you guys have anything that you'd like for us to follow up on, uh, let us know. Like I said, um, at, you know, at the very least, we can, you know, follow up on things or, you know, try our best to kind of move things along. You know, things are a little uncertain, but, you know, we can try to get some answers for you guys in the meantime. Um, no, we, we really appreciate that. I encourage everybody to stay safe, stay healthy, and Likewise. schools, um, as I know you all well. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. We're now truly adjourned at 8.07. <laughs> thanks so much. Have a good Have night. Good night and stay safe, everybody. Good thanks. night. You too.